Hey guys, happy Wednesday. My name is Alex and I've been an intern at Saunders Machine Works for about a year now and I'll be covering today's Wednesday widget. This week we'll be machining engine heads, cutting our head covers and head gaskets on our laser, machining the two badge pins, and 3D printing our crank retaining clips, the camshaft, and the manifold cover for our V8 engine block project. We'll walk through speeds and feeds in Fusion 360. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. In our first V8 engine block video, we use simultaneous 5-axis machining on our Haas VM3 to machine the engine block. Card to that video right here. In our second video, we machined a fixture to hold the connecting rods while we machine them, a handle to manually turn the crankshaft, and two feet. First up, we've got the heads. On a real engine, these would hold things like your valves and your injectors, but on our engine, they're purely aesthetic. They're just for looks. The heads sit on top of both sides of the engine block, right above where your pistons are. So we'll be making these hollow and have an acrylic cover on top so you can look down and see what each of the pistons are doing. Let's get this part started with a quick face. We're using this Superfly at 2500 RPM and 40 inches per minute with 10 thou axial depth of cut. First up, we've got the shear hog, 10,000 RPM, 60 inches a minute, and 0.15 depth of cut and width of cut. Next up, tool 31 at 10,000 RPM, 2 thou feed per tooth, 50 thou width of cut, and a quarter inch depth of cut. And this is just going to come in and take out all the little bits that I couldn't get to with the shear hog. Okay, now that we're done with our adaptive, we're just going to come around for a few quick finishing passes. Now I'm putting in our tool 25, which is a quarter inch 90 degree chamfer mill. This first op is going to surface a fairly large 45 degree plane across the back of the part. And then we're going to go on to put a few quick chamfers on it. After coming in and doing a quick spot with tool 25, we're going to drill four holes with the number 36 drill. And these are going to serve not only as the holes to fix draw our part, but the holes to hold on are clear head covers. Next, we're going to do a parallel with a 3 16th ball end mill, and this is gonna surface the semicircle features on both sides of the part. And also, we're gonna surface a fillet on the back side.
And last but not least, we're gonna use our tool 40, which is a 3 8 ball end mill to do a parallel and surface this front inclined plane. Now on to op 2 for this part, and there really is no great way to hold it in a vise, both because I didn't take that into consideration when modeling the part, and I should have, but also because it's such a thin part and we've taken away so much material that holding it in a vise could cause it to collapse. So the solution I came up with for this is this quick fixture. It's pretty simple. The shape you see lines up exactly with the inside of the head, and the four holes we drilled earlier are going to correspond with holes in the fixture to use our mounting hardware. And for op 2, we're back to tool 31, our quarter inch end mill, running it at 10,000 RPM, 2 thou feed per tooth, 35 thou width of cut, and 30 thou depth of cut. And there's a good reason we're using this tool as opposed to something much quicker like the shear hog. While we're holding onto it with four pieces of hardware, they're all relatively small, being 632, and I didn't want to risk throwing apart with a tool that exerts more tool pressure like the shear hog. In addition, like I mentioned before, the part's relatively thin, so we could run into some chatter issues getting into larger tools. So we stuck with tool 31, and if you notice, I had to run this in two ops. That's because there's so much unsupported material in the center of the part, if I were to just do one adaptive, it would come around and we'd end up with a large chunk of metal just falling through our part or getting thrown because of the tool. So we did it in two ops and took the center out first and then got rid of the rest of the material. Finally, a quick quarter inch drill for the two holes that will serve to mount our head to the engine block. Next up, we're going to use our Boss laser to cut our head covers and our head gaskets out of 8th inch acrylic. The last part I'll be machining for you today is the badge pin, and I'll be making two of these. They press into the front and the back of the manifold cover, which you're going to 3D print in just a little bit. First up is tool 31, our quarter inch end mill. Using the same recipes as before, we're going to rough out the back side of the pin. Just finished up a few finishing passes. Now we're switched to our Tool 25 quarter inch chamfer mill and we're gonna throw a few edge breaks on it. Getting ready for op two, and this was probably the hardest part about machining the badge pin. Because it's so small on the bottom, it was hard to get lined up and square with the rest of the vise. But that's all good to go, and we're gonna come in with Tool 31 and finish up the shape of the badge pin. To finish up this part, we're back to our quarter inch chamfer mill. I'm going to throw a couple edge breaks on it and then use it to engrave the SMW logo on the front. Last but not least, we're going to 3D print a few parts on our Mark Forged Mark II printer. Here you can see us printing the crankshaft retaining clips, the camshaft, and the manifold cover. And now it's time to pull out the engine block we machined, gather up all the parts from our last video, 
and get started on assembly. The engine works great and it was a super fun project. I'd say next time we may want to machine the crankshaft instead of 3D printing it because the filament is so hygroscopic that it just becomes more and more flexible over time and it makes the engine harder to turn. But other than that, everything went great. I had a lot of fun designing and making this engine and hopefully you guys had just as much fun watching. We'll see you next week here on NYC CNC. Hi folks, if you just watched that video and were impressed by what Alex did, I am right there with you. I think what he did on this whole project is spectacular, but also it gets me fired up because that's what this is all about. I, I love making parts and running machines, but I also love being part of the community, building this business and paying it forward. Alex is a senior in high school. I did not get involved in that project in any way. That fixturing, the speeds and feeds, running the machines, that's all him. He is on a state winning Vex Robotics team. He's interested in engineering. He's going to be a better in whatever he does in life because of what he's been able to do here. Make parts, fix your stuff, problem solve, set up tooling. Like that gets me fired up. So this was one of the first Wednesday widgets where I wasn't as involved and I had the chance to kind of watch this video as we're finishing up the editing and about ready to publish it. And I just was so uh, proud of Alex, but also happy with the framework that we built here to bring folks in, get them trained, get them learning, get them making parts and moving forward. So folks, thank you for sticking around for the journey. Hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed. See you soon.